Once again, you need to put your hands like this and you need to tell him just take a deep breath in and out. So, yes, once again, once again. Do you have any pain at your legs? You need to tell him. So, he doesn't have the leg anymore. And you need to put the stethoscope to see the bruise as well. So, no bruise over like this sprain. Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Very good. So, sir, my name is Dr. Sa, one of the PACES candidates here today. I have been asked to examine your tummy. So, sir, what I'm going to do, I'd like to have a very good look first. Feel, tapping, and listen to your tummy. So, do you have any pain right at this moment at your tummy? No. All right. So, during this examination, if you have any of the pain and discomfort, just let me, I'll stop at that moment. Is it all right? All right. Thank you very much. Yes, my dear doctor, listen very carefully. You entered in the room that you start with the deep bundle packs altogether and greetings, introduction, instruction, pain position, and poser. So you have done everything, and position is lying flat for the abdominal examination, and poser means the exposure. You need to expose him. So you need to tell him, sir, could you please just open your shot? Is that all right? All right. Yes. So, sir, could you please just sit forward for me? Good I'm way. helping you. I'm helping you. So I, I understand that you have some of the problem, right? Mobility. Let's sit forward for me. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. So I can help you to put off your shot. Now put off your shot. So yes. Mm -hmm. So yes, my dear doctor, just look at him whenever you're just putting off your dress and shot, and we can observe him that the hyperextension of the cervical spine, and you can see the loss of normal lumbar lordosis and making a question mark posture. It's a sport diagnosis for the ankylosing spondylitis. And if you just tell him, just can you just turn your head on the left side? Left side, okay. And then, and now right hand side, right side now. Yes. So you can see some of the restricted movement of his neck. So yes, my dear doctor, immediately after entering the room, the station one abdomen. And whenever you felt that this man would have the difficulty in moving his the neck joint, the spine joints, and having typically the question mark posture, having the hyperextension of the cervical spine and also the loss of number, normal lordosis of the lumbar spine, and with the protuberant abdomen is the typical and the spot diagnosis for the ankylosing spondylitis. So, yes, my dear doctor, this is knowing the facts, the ankylosing spondylitis. So Whenever you are focusing in the station one abdomen, then you need to examine the abdomen. So you need to anticipate fast what things that you are expecting in a patient with ankylosing spondylitis. So in an ankylosing spondylitis, the rule of A in abdomen, there's a amyloidosis that you're expecting. And the amyloidosis equal to the box that you need to know, my dear, there is a RCM plus NOS plus HS. So what I say, the RCM means the restricted cardiomyopathy. Nephrotic syndrome and the hepatosplenic megaly. So I'm saying the amyloidosis, the rule of M also. M for yes, once again, the myopathy means the cardiomyopathy, restricted cardiomyopathy, and NOS means the nephrotic syndrome, means the massive proteinuria, and third is the megaly, is the hepatosplenic megaly. And fourth M is once again the macroglossia. So in an abdomen station means the GIT that we are expecting in a patient the ankylosing spondylitis, the findings of the amyloidosis is a hepatosplenomegaly. So we need to be very focused on to the hepatosplenomegaly along with the features of nephrotic syndrome. So the nephrotic syndrome, the features will have definitely the leukonychia in your hands that you are expecting. And the second important point, there's the edema. So these are the two important findings along with the urine dipstick will have the massive proteinuria. So the nephrotic syndrome done. Along with the hepatosplenomegaly that you need to examine the patient to get the liver and to get the spleen. If you found them, putting them together, hepatosplenomegaly, along with that, the nephrotic syndrome, so you can make the diagnosis, the amyloidosis is the complications of ankylosing spondylitis.
So you need to examine focusing and keeping them in your mind. Then you need to start your examinations, my dear. And you need to be very focused with the findings that I said in the hands that we are expecting for the leukonychia and the leg for the leg edema and the anal sarta and also aside is also the fluid overload, whatever the forms, but the leg edema that we are expecting, sacral edema as well. And along with that, the urine dipstick at the best side for the massive proteinuria. And also the liver and the spleen, then palpations that you need to do, my dear. And along with that, you should palpate the kidneys as well. And of course, that you will do all the steps of abdomen examination, but I will be very focused for the encouraging spondylitis, what the findings that you are expecting, so that we can get the idea in station one abdomen that what things that you need to focus, my dear, and you need to get the findings in your hands. So let's start by showing whether he has got the nearly leukonychia or not. So in the hands that we are looking for the leukonychia, so he doesn't have the leukonychia. So he doesn't have leukonychia. And also no clubbing and also turn his hands to look for the palma reithema and the dubitrans contracture. So he doesn't have the, any other features of chronic liver disease. Then you need to do all the procedures altogether. But yes, as because we are focusing for the leukonychia for the especially for the nephrotic syndrome that we are looking for as due to the hypoalbuminemia but we are not getting these findings means that leukonychia is absent so in an inspection that we are looking for the abdomen distended there is just a fatty abdomen or maybe the hepatosplenomegaly is there so it's an inspection findings but what i'm looking for we are looking for the leukonychia due to the hypoalbuminemia and I'm just showing in a non-systematic ways so that you can keep them in your mind so that you can examine all them together in a patient ankylosing spondylitis. So yes, uh, we are saying here, do you have any pain at your legs? You need to tell him. So he doesn't have the leg edema. So it does mean that he doesn't have the features of diaphoric syndrome. And then you need to do, and you need to keep in your mind that the urine dipstick for the massive protein, right? then you need to look for. So that's because we found no leukonychia, no leg edema, so the no nephrotic syndrome. I'm showing it in non-systematic ways, just to keep the features in your mind so that you can focus during examination, the abdomen, full ex abdomen examination, my dear. So now I'm focusing on to the abdomen, just to give you the idea, this gentleman has got the hepatosplenomegaly. So yes, you need to focus once again, you need to put your hands like this and you tell him, just take a deep breath in and out. So yes, once again, once again, once again. So he has got a good hepatomegaly. So you need to confirm it by doing the parkas, tympanic, done, done, it's all been done. So this is the liver dullness and you need to focus on the upper border of the liver dullness. Tap on the chest. So this is the dullness. So is a second, third and this is fourth. So you can put the, the liver is enlarged. So you can feel the liver span is really enlarged as hepatomacally. But the border is not irregular. And the border is not, and also the liver is non tender. So we, I found this three finger base, hepatomegaly, which is non tender, farming consistency. The border is not irregular. It does mean that the border is not irregular, that you are excluding the hepatocellular carcinoma. And non tender means you are excluding that the congestive cardiac failure. So these two important things that you need to always say the border is not irregular, and the non tender, farming consistency, no bruise overlying the mass. So you need to take the stethoscope in your hands that with the bell of the stethoscope. Yes. You need to put the stethoscope to see the brewing. So no bruise overlying this mass. So it's just an hepatomegaly, three finger pairs, non-tender, farming consistency, and no bruise overlying this mass. So this is hepatomegaly that you found. So yes, my dear, you got a hepatomegaly, and now that you need to focus on to the spleen, then you need to put your hands from here, take a deep breath in and out. So yes, I can, I can, I can, I can feel the anterior border of the spleen as well. Yes.
So yes, the border of the spleen that I can feel. So this is the splenomegaly, splenomegaly that you found. So you need to do the tap on the this tympanic, 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 tympanic. So this is done, this is done. So this is the splenomegaly is once again that you found. So once again, then whenever the spleen, spleen you found, then you park us and you need to put the stethoscope to see the bruise as well. So no bruise overlying this spleen. So immediately after that, you need to look onto the anterior chest, especially the left infraclavicular space to look for any scar mark or any box underlying them for the EICD pacemaker, because I said it, the Amyloidosis is strongly complicated by, or amyloidosis features is RCM, restricted cardiomyopathy, and this restricted cardiomyopathy is also treated with the AICD pacemaker sometimes. So you need to look for, there is no AICD pacemaker scar. So I can say that he may have, or he may not have the restricted cardiomyopathy. You need to look for by doing the echocardiography test. So my dear, what do you need to do? You need to take the shot and give, give him back once again. And just cover him up like this. And tell him, sorry, thank you, thank you very much. Means you need to do all the steps, whatever you need, my dear. But the main findings that I need to discuss so that you can get the things, keep in your mind, Focusing on them, get the findings in your hands, put together, make the diagnosis and present your case, my dear, the way that I am saying. So yes, my dear, listen very carefully immediately after finishing. You need to wash your hands. You shouldn't forget it. And now listen very carefully. If you get, my dear, a case for the ankylosing spondylitis and abdomen examination, think about the diagnosis, the first diagnosis, the amyloidosis. As I said, the amyloidosis equal to the RCM plus NOS plus hyperosmeromagaly. And the macroglossia. Yes, he doesn't have the macroglossia. I, I not show them. So I will listen very carefully as because I have said in a different ways also. The M for myopathy, amyloidosis, M rule. The myopathy means the uh, rusty restricted cardiomyopathy. M for massive proteinuria means the nephrotic syndrome. And M for megaly means the hepatosplenomegaly. So we are focusing here the findings of the hepatosplenomegaly without the features of nephrotic syndrome, but still that in your hands that, that you can do the urine dipstick for the massive proteinuria. So the presentation should be something like that. You need to tell to your examiner, sir, my clinical diagnosis of this man is amyloidosis as evidenced by hepatosplenomegaly, three finger pits from the right coastal margin, liver is enlarged and palpable, which is firm in consistency, non-tender, non-pulsatile, and not irregular border and no bruise overlying the mass. Along with the spleen is four finger base on the left coastal margin, which is forming consistency with the knot in the anterior border, which moves directing towards the right iliac fossa. And Dalon percussion and no bruise overlying the spleen. So putting all them together, I found the hepatosplenomegaly, but I have not found the features of macroglossia. I have not found the features of nephrotic syndrome as evidenced by the leukonychia, absence of leukonychia, and absence of leg edema. And also, I have found, and I, I, I would like to do the urine dipstick to exclude, or maybe the, to include, the massive proteinuria at the bedside for the urine dipstick for the massive proteinuria. So putting all them together, I, I think this gentleman has got the amyloidosis, which is the secondary complications or the complications from the ankylosing spondylitis. I have seen whenever the, the, uh, he has got the reduced mobility of, uh, of his spine. So, and also having a question mark posture as evidenced by the hyperextension of the cervical joints and also the loss of normal lumbar lordosis. Putting them together, he has got the ankylosing spondylitis. And I have not seen any of the scar mark uh, in, in the left uh, upper chest. Uh, in, in the left uh, infraclavicular space, uh, that does mean that he 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 has not having the AICD pacemaker scar. Maybe he has the restricted cardiomyopathy, but I need to do the test, means the echocardiography or maybe the cardiac MRI, uh, we call it the CMR, to confirm the diagnosis for the 
restrictive cardiomyopathy. So my clinical diagnosis of this gentleman is hepatosplenum megaly, which is consistent with the amyloidosis, which is a complication for the encouraging spondylitis without the evidence of nephrotic syndrome. I hope that my dear this interesting case, you enjoyed it and the learning that you learned my dear that will be really helpful for in station one abdomen if you get the case something like that. Thank you, thank you very much.